Hello everybody, Kyle here. I haven't done a review in about a month, I believe, so I think it's best to start off the next two videos I'm going to put out. This one and the one after are both going to be DC related. I'm actually going to release one now for Blue Beetle and I will review it right now. And then be on the lookout today, I will also release my, my adventures with Superman Season 1 review. So, with that being said, let's get into Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is, I don't know how many, you know, DC movies it is at this point, um, let alone how many DC EU movies at this point, but it is the next DC film that has been released. It came out about a couple weeks ago. Um, I saw it back then, and... I will say that as I've had more time to reflect upon it, I really enjoyed Blue Beetle. Um, it's directed by Angel Manuel Soto. It is starring Cholo Meriduena as Blue Beetle slash Jaime Reyes, Bruna Marquezin as Jenny Cord, Susan Sarandon as Victoria Cord, and George Lopez as Uncle Rudy. And I mean, it's pretty simple in terms of its plot where it follows a young man who is a graduate and just is trying to find his way in his life and his future and he comes across this device known as the scarab which is an alien device that bonds to him and gives him a super suit with powers that it's kind of like a Green Lantern in a sense where he can, whatever he thinks of, it, he can create. And it's, what what I think really makes this movie special is it has this family element to it. And we've seen Miss Marvel, the TV series, um, have a family element to it. We've seen Shazam, um, the films, have family elements to them. But I think what really works with this movie is that the entire family knows that Jaime is Blue Beetle from pretty much the beginning. I mean, literally, when he becomes Blue Beetle, the family is there. His entire family, his sister, his father, his mother, his uncle, his grandma. And I think that really sets this film apart from other comic book movies because you really get a sense of connection. What Jaime goes through, his family also goes through. And it's not just in terms of his powers, but it's also in terms of, you know, what he's going through in his life. When he's trying to figure out where he's going to go in the future, you know, what's his job going to be, what what's out there for him after graduating college. His family's with him every step of the way. And I personally relate to that because I love my family. My family's very supportive of me and I just graduated college a couple of years back and I'm still at that place where I'm trying to figure out where I am going in my future. So I think that it's really relatable for people that are really like my age watching this as opposed to I think films like say Spider-Man Homecoming that are relatable to f kids in high school, films like you know even more of the other superheroes that are older relatable to them but Jaime's at that age where we don't really get to see what's it like for kids that are in college that then become superheroes um so I think that was a really interesting aspect of the film and then of course the family I really love Cholo in this role he is just fabulous as Jaime he's so energetic he's so lovable and I'm very proud of him because I have been watching him since Cobra Kai. And to go into your first film, this big studio blockbuster, and to really knock it out of the park, it's, I really think that is a huge, huge deal and something to be really proud of and something to be really commended as an actor because sometimes when you're a tv actor it is a little bit different going into film and he just genuine genuinely has that charisma that 
works for any movie star out there. And I think he'll be really big. Um, hopefully, if you know this film um, does do well and we do get to see him get other roles, he'll have a future in both TV and film. Um, another standout for me, I really liked um, Bruna Marquezine as Jenny Cord. I thought her and Jaime's chemistry was on point. It was really, I think, compounded by the fact that she she has this like tense relationship with her um, aunt, Victoria Cord, played by Susan Sarandon. And then you get to see her with the Reyes family. And I think even though she isn't, you know, a part of their family um, through blood, she is still somewhat accepted into that family as the film progresses. And it's really great to see someone like that become a part of that family when, you know, her own family is not really as connected to her. And it's something that when I'm thinking of Shazam Fury of the Gods, I wish that they expanded more upon Rachel Zegler's character of Anthea and showcased a little bit more of how she interacts with the Shazam family. Because we only really get her with Freddy in that film. Um, but here, it's great to see how like especially in this one scene when they find out you know she gave Jaime the scarab and they're like what did you do why'd you do this she's like I'm sorry I didn't know it was gonna you know it was gonna do that to you I didn't know it would bond to you and um I think George Lopez in that scene in particular he's throwing a shoe at Jaime or whatever he throws at him and He's just so funny in this movie, but it's a different type of role for George Lopez. He, he's not, like, I thought before going in, I thought he would be the father of Jaime. But no, he's the uncle. And the father is in the film. Because sometimes, like, the hero's father's dead, and then the uncle is, like, the one taking care of him. Or sometimes the father and the uncle aren't getting along, like we see in Into the Spider-Verse. But here, both the father and the uncle are great um, together, and they also work well with Jaime and... That, I think, was a really great um, way to showcase George Lopez. Because usually, you know, usually he's, you know, um, adding the comedy in the film. But there are some really great scenes between him and Cholo. And there's also another great scene between Cholo and his father. Um, so, yeah, like, I think overall, like, the Reyes family, Jenny, I really love all of their relationships together. And I think, for, for me, I really got emotional watching this movie because the family goes through some very very tense moments and very emotional moments in the film and i i was crying in a couple scenes in this movie that i did not expect to really get emotional at um specifically one scene where they attack the family in their house and it's just like the parallels to real life and how you know um there's a lot of racist and awful actions being taken towards um those that come to our country and especially when we've seen over the last number of years um the amount of racism that has proliferated in the united states that it's really really sometimes um hard to watch some of these scenes but it adds to the reality of it all um I will say if I had some criticisms for the film itself, I will say that I think Susan Sarandon and the villain, Carapax, um, they are a little bit thin in terms of villains and development. Um, there's something they do with Carapax in the film that isn't necessarily resolved. You really find out until the end of the movie. And it's... I feel like it was intentional, but at the same time, you do feel a disconnect to this character throughout. Um, Susan Sarandon is also in this movie, and she, I love Susan Sarandon. She was, um, she was in Enchanted, one of my favorite films, and as a kid, like she was like the ultimate bad guy, as Queen Nerissa. <laughs> and um, here, I just 
I don't know if I wish she brought a little bit more to that, but this role was originally supposed to be played by Sharon Stone, and then Susan Sarandon came in, so I don't know if that affected it. There's something there where it's like, I can see what she's doing, and I, I mean, I like her in the movie, but I want a little more of her. I kind of wish like they added a couple more scenes to flesh her out, flesh Kara Pax out, but... I mean, overall, the film has really fun action. It has a lot of funny comedy. I mean, my theater was laughing throughout. And it has a really great family dynamic. Um, it is definitely one of the best DC films in the last number of years that isn't like the Batman or the Suicide Squad. Um, but definitely, like, way better than The Flash. Way better than Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Um, even, I would say, better than Black Adam. And I think that means it's a win for DC really and I really hope they continue more with these characters and it's a shame like there's a strike going on and the actors themselves are unable to promote the film with the writers and really you know the studios should um, pay these actors and they should pay these writers so that they can actually you know be a part of this movie because I mean this is the first real um, you know live action full-blown Latino um, film that has you know blue beetle and like hispanic culture at the front and center of this story of course we had into the spider-verse and across the spider-verse going into this but for being a live action film this is a huge deal and it's a real shame that you know the actors um couldn't go to the their own premiere um for this film but hopefully um you know, with these strikes, you know, the studios will pay these actors and writers what they deserve and not um, really do what they're doing, which is completely unfair. So that being said, I love Blue Beetle. I think it's a great film that everyone should see. And if you haven't seen it already, please go and check it out. And let me know what you thought. Did you like Blue Beetle? Are you excited to see where he goes if he continues in the DCU? Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.